In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers' question, which is how we can create these hover effects here. When we hover over our donut slice, it will show the text here. Basically, very similar to the tooltip, it will show, it will grab the colors well, of the borders. It will grab the, the label text and the label number. So let's check out and explore how to do this. So let's answer one of the viewers' question, which is how to show the text in the center on hover in a donut chart. So what we're going to do here, first of all, is to get our default code. For that, I'm going to recommend you to go to chartjs3.com, getting started. You can find the link also in the description box. And we scroll down here and just copy this chunk of code. If you want to understand what this code does, I highly recommend you to watch this video here. It explains the JavaScript of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste this in here. And once I did that, I'm going to cut out title. Put the title in here, save this, refresh, and there we are. So what I want to do now is I want to convert this bar chart into a donut chart. First of all, if we have a donut chart, the size will be larger because it will be a square shape. So I'm going to convert this into a width of 400. So we have a nice 400 by 400 square. Next, what I want to do, I want to scroll down here, convert the type into a donut chart. And then finally, I want to remove the scales. A donut chart does not have any scale, so I'm going to remove that. If I save this, refresh, there we are. Final item, what I want to do is to make the donut ring more narrow, so it will look far more appealing. Comma here, you will see a cut out, and the cut out will be of 90%. Save this, refresh, there we are. All right, so now we have this here, and now it's time to put in the text here. But what we want to do with the text, this is very important, is it should only be triggered on Hoover. So when I hover here, you'll see this tooltip here, but basically I want this text of Tuesday and number 12 being shown in here. So to do this, we're going to work with a plugin. So I'm going to say here comma, and then I'm going to say here plugins. And in here, we're going to give it a plugin name. And in this case, I'll just say this will be our Hoover label. So that will be the plugin name. So that will mean here we're going to create our Hoover label plugin block. And this will start with a constant of Hoover label. So once we did this, I'm going to put in here an ID. The ID, and I like to keep this all same Hoover label constant with the ID name here. Although we will not use this, but this is usually uh, used if you have options with the plugin feature. Anyway, I will just skip that for now. Next, we're going to work on the timing. And the timing of drawing, when would we draw the item here? In this case, I will say draw after. What I want to do is make sure that that text we show here will be always on top. So we say here, uh, not draw after, but after draw. So once that would mean once the entire chart has been drawn, at that very moment, the text will be drawn. So in here, three parameters, the chart, the arcs for arguments and options. Again here, the options here is directly connected to this and with this here. We will not use this, so we could just ignore that. Arguments doesn't matter at all, does have has certain values, but functionalities I do not uh, well, it's not really clear to me as well. It doesn't show really things, it's just basically something behind the scene. Finally, this one is essential for us. The chart here is a object related to the item here. And what we're going to do now is basically the following. I want to put in here what we call this is what we call a object destructuring. We have this object here, and I want to Destructure it and destructuring mean, means this object consists of multiple items, but I want to use a shorthand so I don't have to go very deep into the object, but just use the shorthand for that. If you don't understand what I'm saying right now, don't worry, I'm going to show you a visual and then it will be very clear. So, first of all, I'm going to say a constant, and this constant, because it's an object destruction, will be like that, meaning that we know the chart has is an object. What I want to do now is I want to split them out. So in what I want to split them out is CTX. So basically, normally it would be here, chart CTX, and then we had to do something. But now what I did is instead of saying chart CTX, now I can just say CTX and then do something. And this is necessary because the CTX is the reference for this, which would mean we're going to draw something in the canvas. Next, we have here the chart area. And for me, the chart area is extremely important because I want to put the label text here in the center. To do this, we need to know what is the chart area. And if I'm referring to chart area, I'm talking about 
you can see here this is the canvas this time well in this case the canvas is 400 in width and 400 in height but if you look very carefully you know that here is a legend that legend is not considered a part of the chart area so the chart area would be the drawing area of the canvas or of the chart that is in the canvas so just think about like a separate div in the canvas so i want to grab these coordinates here to get the center here because it would mean that we are in the center here we have to calculate also how much space this is basically grabbing so to do that we have the chart area for example left uh, left right top and bottom so that's basically the four lines where the working area is of the canvas next we also have the width and the height in my case i will probably only use the top to calculate the space here and then the width and the height everything else is considered obsolete for me so we don't need that so what we're going to do now is first of all ctx dot save once I did this basically what I'm doing is I'm just saving all the parameters so now what I want to do here is the following how are we going to trigger the drawing here because if you would just do this I'm going to show it to you well let's start to draw something later on we're going to convert this into a hoover effect so what we're going to do now is we're going to say here very simple ctx remember the ctx here means draw in the canvas the font and we're going to make this here i want a bolder means nice bold or even thicker than bold i think with font width of 600 something next i want 60 pixels in height and i want the font family to be arial one more thing I want, of course, is the color. So I'm going to say a CTX fill style. And then we say here, the color will be, well, let's do blue for now. Later on, we're going to make it dynamic based on whatever the donut ring color is. Let me just um, remove that one. So the inspector element has been gone. So you can see once this is red, yellow, whatever we have, we want to show that one. And finally, we want to say here, CTX dot fill fill text and this fill text we're going to put in here well for now test comma and then the position so the position here is basically x and y so we're the starting point on the left and the starting point on the top so what i want to do here is basically that's why i have the width and the height because i know the width is 300 and the height is 300 or sorry 400 but the height would be maybe 350 because there's some space here well I guess 375 there's probably some space here here of 25 pixels so what we're going to do here now is just to position them how do we do with the width well the width is the easiest one because the width would be like this divide by two so we say divide by two and then for the height i'm going to just test that one and then we can put in more so if i save this now you can see here all right so it does something but it's not really exactly in the center here although the reason why this is not in the center here is let me show you is because the text is not aligned at the center it is te text aligned on the left meaning here it's in the center and then it starts to draw here so let's do the text alignment so we're going to say a ctx text align and then here equal center save that refresh all right that works better but the height here is not and the reason why the height is not is because we have here this part here it's being calculated but if you also look at the console log of height so let me show you so you can have a visual height save that it's 346 so that would mean that this here if i do here now a top as well should have the remaining let's put a top here save that and you can see here and you can see this is of course the animation so don't worry about that 54 so all together it makes 400 so what we need to do here is we have this width here or sorry the height of 346 and then we need to do divide this by 2 and then plus the 54 pixels from here so what i'm going to do here is just say plus top if i save this now refresh there we are so now we are in the center here and that looks beautiful so how are we going to trigger it now so to do this let's remove all of these console logs we need to 
figure out how can we do an active or not active. Basically, when we hover, then something is active. For that, I'm going to show you something beautiful, which is the chart dot underscore, or we can do it even like this. Let me show you this. Refresh, and let's see if we can find here underscore active. There you are. This is the one we need. Right now, it's considered array of zero. But if I hover over here, something is moving, as you can see here. And then we have to just check here, somewhere in the middle, where it is considered active. Does it show here? It doesn't show yet. Maybe here, here down. And then here, active. All right, so it doesn't show. What I want to do is just grab this one, then. Put in this. And save that so that will probably be very easy so you can see here now it loads but there's we're not active yet but if you hover over it look at that and then look at that it will register if we're active yes or no and you can see the moment we're active we get information and what information we get we get the index so which um, donut ring segment are we selecting or hovering and we also see even here the do the data set index so these two are crucial for us because now we can grab the data and show them. So what I want to do here now is basically the following. And this will be the if statement. So first of all, if statement, and then we see here, chart active. But what I want to do is chart active. I want to do basically, I want to see if there is a length. So what I'm going to say here, I'm just going to show this, chart active length, and then just comment out this for now. So if I save this now, you can see it does nothing. And then here, there you are. So now it starts to only see yes or no, and that's what I need. So with that, we can now start to play around. And all I want to do now an if statement. So if statement dot length of chart underscore active dot length. And then we're going to say here if the length is um, equal to one, I guess in this case, or bigger than zero. If that is the case. Then I want to do something. What I want to do is I want to show this text here. So let's put it in there. Save that. Refresh. All right. So now nothing happens. But if I go go here, here we are. It starts to do beautifully what I want. Now what our next part is is of course to grab the data. So how do we do this? Well, for that we have this chart active, and we need to dig a bit more deeper into the chart active. So what I'm going to do here is basically the following. I'm going to say here, let's say here, this will be the text label. And then later on, we also have a constant with the number label, or basically the data point. So what I'm going to do here is the following. How do we get this? Well, first of all, we need to use here the chart again. So let me show you again. And let's cut out that or remove this. We don't need this. Then I want to do here console log. And this console log will now show us the chart. So if I save this, refresh. Uh, all right, I guess this is probably not allowed yet. It's blank. There we are. So we are on this active, but then we are on this chart. If I click on that, what I want to do now is in the chart, I want to go to config. And from config, we go to data, and you probably already guessed where we're going, data, and then data sets, and then here you can see all the information we need. Well, we can get here our data, or what I want first is not the data sets, I want the labels. So in the data, we get here the labels, there we are. That's the one I need. So what I want here, like how do we get there from config.data.labels? Chart.config.data.labels. Now, if I save this, refresh, hover, we get now the entire array. So how do we extract the specific value in here? Well, let's go back here with this, and you will see here now what we're going to do. Console log, show this, save that, refresh. All right, we get all of this data. We need to get the index zero here first. So we say here index zero, and then I'll show you exactly what we need. Go in here, and then we get here data set index and the index here. And this is probably the one I want for now. So what we're going to do here is that, and then all I want to do here is the following. I just say here dot index. So if I save this, I should get here now the specific one. Uh, let's comment out this for now. Over. 
and then here and then we get here there and there and there and there all right so if we get this you probably figure out now we should be able to get here the specific text uh, no, I don't want that. Save this. Refresh. All right. So let's do that. You can see Monday, Tuesday, etc., etc. So now we've got this, and then probably here we can put in this, and let's add up here the very first value. So if I save that, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Beautiful. So that works. Now we're going to do the numbers here. So how do we do the numbers? It's exactly the same here. But then, of course, we're not into the data and the labels. Well, let me w one more time show you what we need. So we'll go on here. Oh, all right, this is the very uh, exact. I want to go into data. Refresh. There we are in the data. And as you can see here, we were in the labels, but we also have the data set. And the data set is index zero as well. So to get this, what I want to do here is I'll say get data set. Then here, index zero so but this index zero must be soft coded so how do we do that well well let's go back here into this nice item or basically we have the console log here refresh all right we go in here this is the data set index and that's the one i want so i'm going to grab this here and all i do now is just copy and put that in there soft coded here we are. Now we are more deeper in here. So the next thing I want is the border color. So we get here the border color, which is just in there. And then you already figured out how do we get the index number. That is, of course, this one, just similar to what we just did. Copy this, put that in there, save this, refresh, and let me just comment out this console. There we are. Oh, sorry, this is the border color. I didn't want the border color for now, although that is basically the answer to this one here. So I'm just going to copy this already. We can just do that one here. All right, so what I want to do here, of course, is the number. So how do we get the number? It should be here, the data. Save that, refresh. There we are, 18, 12, 6, etc., etc. Beautiful. So now what I'm going to do here, this one is the number here as you can see and if you want to make it a bit more organized we can maybe cut out this and just say your color and just say here constant color equals that all right so now we did this we can remove all of this if i save this now refresh there 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 all right almost done we still need to combine this one this is the reason why we have these here so what I'm going to use here is what we call a template literals, and that's for easier way of concatenation. So back tick, back tick, back tick is below on your keyboard on your escape button, below the escape button, at least on your Mac, probably also on your keyboard, not sure, but on the Mac, MacBook, it is like that. So we get this one here, then colon, and then what I want to do here is of course concatenate the number here, save this, refresh. There we are, and that is how we extract the numbers here and what we can do. We have this, what I want to do, the final one, is just to make sure to avoid any kind of confusion or duplication. I'm going to say here ctx.restore, meaning I want to remove all the saved data afterwards so that if ever I would draw something else on the chart, it will not grab any of these values that we just used for our text here. And this is basically the way you can do it. So if you enjoyed this video, I would highly recommend you to check out another one, which is about how you can create a clickable pie donut chart with links in ChartJS, which is also quite interesting. And it's a different way of using and creating interactive with your chart.